Hello, good evening. This is the Al 24 News, and this is our main headlines. People in Morocco continue to organize demonstrations in cities across the country to voice protests as we about to move to normalize ties with Zionist occupation. Protesters across Lebanon block roads with burning tires after the currency hit a historic law. As cases of the new Omicron variant emerge around the world, many countries are imposing travel bans of increasing quarantine requirements. Hello again and welcome to those who are today's headline. And at the invitation of his counterpart, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of China and Senegal, the Foreign Affairs and the National Community Abroad Minister Amtana Mamra participated on the 29th and the 30th November in the proceeding of the 8th ministerial session of the Sino-African Cooperation Forum held in Senegal's capital Dakar under the theme of depending, depending the Sino-African partnership and promoting sustainable development between China and Africa in the new era. The ministers participating in this meeting will follow the implementation of the outcomes of the third session of the Forum for Chinese-African Cooperation held at the summit in Beijing in September 2018. China-Africa Cooperation combating the corona pandemic will also be assessed and directed with a view to reducing its consequences and the economic and the financial crisis it has produced and to promoting the redevelopment of the African continent. On the sidelines of the ministerial meeting, the head of Algerian diplomacy is to be told bilateral meeting with a number of his African counterparts, as well as consultations with the highest authorities of the Republic of Senegal, which will share the African Union based on the periodic presidency principle starting from the month of February 2022. In another matter in the African continent, people in Morocco plan to organize more demonstrations in cities across the country. Voice protests as Shubat's move to normalize ties with the Zionist entity. The non-governmental group Front of Sport Palestinian has invited all Moroccans to attend the rallies. At least 27 cities are expected to host the protests, including Rabat, Casablanca, Jadida, Tituan, and Berkan. And earlier, demonstrators took the street chanting against the normalization of relations with the Zionist entity and the visit of its defense minister. They called off the elimination of all agreements between their country and the said entity. Protesters across Lebanon blocked roads with burning tires after the currency hit a historic law. Lebanon's economic crisis, which erupted in 2019, has purpled more than three quarters of the population into poverty. Nabil Khazini will clarify in this report. Using burning tires, roads were blocked in central Beirut, in Tripoli, and in the north and the southern city of Saidun. Protesters gathered today to voice up against deteriorating living conditions and an economic meltdown as the country's currency hits a new low. The Lebanese pound recorded an additional decline this week as the exchange rate of $1 reached 25,000 pounds in the black market while its official price at banks is £1,500. The Lebanese pound has lost about 90% of its value in only about two years. Lebanon was then classified by the World Bank as one of the three worst economic crises in the world, which led to a financial and living collapse and a rise in poverty and employment rates. In a related context, the Lebanese president Michel Aoun said that he would call on Qatar to invest in his country. Aoun added that his country needs Qatari investments in several sectors such as electricity, infrastructure and the banking sector. A step from Aoun that comes in an attempt to inject new cash flow that would help the country raise again. 
Algerian situation, Michel Said, in collaboration with the Palestinian embassy in Algeria and the presence of many Algerian diplomatic figures celebrated the International Day of Solidarity, of Solidarity with Palestinian people to renew the Algerian support for the Palestinian cause, population and resistance. Our reporter, Usami Yadi, was there and has more to deliver. In memory of the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people, the Association of Mashal Shahid celebrated this event to support the Palestinian cause. Many national diplomatic figures from Algeria and Palestine gathered, notably including Nazih bin Ramdan, the representative of the Algerian president, and the Palestinian ambassador Faiz Abu Aita. Today, we are celebrating the International Day of Solidarity with our Algerian brothers here in Algeria, so as to expose the Zionist crimes to the whole world committed against our people and condemn their expansion policies on the expense of Palestinian lands in an outrageous violation of all international laws. This International Day has traditionally provided the international community to focus on the tragedy of the Palestinian people who have not reached their rights and whose cause has not been resolved yet. Uh, this day is called the International Day of Solidarity Avec with the Palestinian people. International means that the international community recognizes this day and recognizes the rights of Palestinian people which are neglected since more than 100 years and the celebrating of this occasion today reflect the importance of this solidarity and the insistence of Palestinian people to liberate their country. This day comes at a time when many countries have normalized their relations with the Zionist entity, including Bahrain, the United Arab Emirates and Morocco, and the intensification of Zionist crimes on the Palestinian territories as military aggression, violence and killing are repeatedly worsening the situation of the Palestinian people. Uh, in, in this day we want uh, the message to be sent to all over the world that the occupation should be end and uh, the establishing state uh, for the, the Palestinian people and the capital is Jerusalem, is the main, and to recognize the government of, of Palestine and the state of Palestine. It's worth noting that the United Nations chose the day of November 29th in 1977 to be the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people, as this day has a big significance and importance for them. To a different story now, as cases of the new Omicron variants emerge around the world, many countries are imposing travel bans or increasing uh, quarantine requirements. Uh, Zara Furjani in this wrap-up will explain how the situation is going with this new virus. Japan will close to all foreign travelers from Tuesday in a bid to slow the spread of the new Omicron variant of COVID-19. The country will restore border controls it had only eased earlier this month for short-term business visitors, foreign students and workers. <music> Authorities in Australia said two travellers who arrived to Sydney from Africa became the first in the country to test positive for the new variant. Travellers from nine African countries are now required to quarantine in a hotel upon arrival. Still, the nation plans to reopen borders to skilled migrants and students starting from December 1st. <music> Tighter restrictions have come into force in the Netherlands amid record COVID cases and concerns over the new Omicron variant. For at least the next three weeks, hospitality and cultural venues such as cafes, museums and cinemas must close by five. The UK tightened rules on mask wearing and on testing of international arrivals after finding two Omicron cases, but British Health Secretary said the government was nowhere reinstituting work from home or more severe social distancing measures. From next month, Spain will allow tourists to enter its territory if they can show proof of a COVID-19 vaccination. Until now, unvaccinated travelers were allowed into the country if they could present a negative PCR test that was taken 72 hours before their arrival. 
France's health ministry said on Sunday that it had detected eight possible cases of the new Omicron variant, with the government saying it would tighten restrictions to contain its spread. No cases linked to Omicron have been detected in the U.S. so far, yet the country is going to restrict travel from South Africa and seven other countries in the region starting Monday. American citizens and permanent U.S. residents, along with spouses and close friends, will be exempt from the travel ban. Canada has detected two cases of the Omicron variant in Ontario. Health officials said in a statement that the cases were found in two people who had recently been in Nigeria. Ontario has focused rapid COVID-19 testing on travelers who have been to the infected countries. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa has called for lifting Omicron travel bans. Ramaphosa expressed his dissatisfaction on decision calling uh, calling it as scientifically unjustified as more countries report cases of new highly muted variants. More in this report. South Africa's president, Cyril Ramaphosa, has condemned travel bans enacted against his country and its neighbors over the new corona variant Omicron. Cyril Ramaphosa said he was deeply disappointed by the action, which he described as unjustified and called for the bans to be urgently lifted. These restrictions are completely unjustified and unfairly discriminate against our country and our Southern African sister countries. Australia, Japan, Canada and the US are among many other countries which announced travel restrictions from South Africa. Scientists say they are worried Omicron may be more infectious and that the new variant is more resistible to existing vaccines. It looks potentially quite a lot scarier even than Delta. And don't forget, we thought of Delta, I certainly thought of Delta as, as peak variant and probably it couldn't get much worse than that. This looks potentially worse. Um, on the other hand, there's no reporting from South Africa yet that cases are more severe. And it looks like vaccines may still be doing something because we heard from there yesterday that the people in hospital tended to be the unvaccinated people rather than the vaccinated. Travel bans have been imposed on travelers coming from South African countries, including South Africa, Botswana and Zimbabwe, days after the new coronavirus variant was discovered. Our flight's booked for a week's time, <coughs> but we got the news from our daughter in the UK about 12.30, 1 o'clock last night, saying that the UK were going to <coughs> introduce a red list. The World Health Organization has called a meeting of experts in Geneva to assess the threat amid new cases have been identified in the Netherlands, Denmark, Australia and the United Kingdom. The World Health Organization called on the international community to avoid imposing travel restrictions on southern African countries in response to the new variants of COVID-19 virus Omicron. The WHO recommends that all countries take scientific and risk-based approach and put it in place measures that can limit its possible spread. Countries such as Australia, Japan, United States and Canada have blacklist travelers from South African countries to enter their territories in growing series of travel restrictions imposed as countries who have struggled to slow the spread of this variant. And for more details about the situation in the Republic of South Africa, joining me live via phone call from Cape Town, South Africa, Mr. Kenneth Maltown, social activist and political analyst. First of all, Mr. Kenneth, what can you express over the current economic and social circumstances in the South Africa regarding uh, the pandemic impacts and Omicron international restriction? Say, you know, uh, according to the statistics, statistics South Africa, that the tourism industry as a whole in South Africa brings like uh, seven percent of the, the 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 GDP GDP, the gross domestic product, and and employs uh, about one point five million people uh, across across the country. And, and, and thirdly, one of our main, uh, 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 like the main places where uh, uh, tourists come from uh, is especially the UK. So then, <clears throat> that being said, uh, you know, the international restrictions, the uh, 
the discovery of the new variant uh, of the COVID disease uh, has had severe impacts, you know, uh, on 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 the economics. In the sense that many people have lost their jobs. Uh, there's few, you know, restaurants that have closed the down because uh, their main, you know, target market customers were, you know, tourists. So also as a result, people who were working in this uh, 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 restaurant spaces also then lost, well, you know, their jobs Mr. Kenneth, uh, in the process. The authorities, I'm sorry to cut you over, the, the authorities over there forced the vaccine, but it is said every action has a reaction. So what are the consequences of this mandatory vaccine? The, the, the vaccination has become uh, mandatory, uh, which means uh, it is now forced uh, Upon, upon, upon everyone to, to take it, uh, rather than as an option, you know, of, you know, as a choice of people to, you know, to take the vaccine. So that has created, <coughs> uh, kind of like divided communities, divided movements, and I can say even, you know, d uh, divided households in the sense that you get, uh, people in the same community now who are <clears throat> pro vaccination and people who are anti vaccination and you get you know the same within households the same within social movements and yeah this is you know it's showing it's building uh, rather cracks and 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 divisions amongst, amongst thank you this, from uh, cape uh, town know, south africa mr kenneth matlau social activist and political analyst thank you so much Another story, the World Health Organization named the new and potentially more transmissible coronavirus variant as Omicron, describing it as a variant of concern. They said that multiple studies are underway as advisors continue to monitor this letter. Zara Ferjani will explain more. The health officials have stated that the new Omicron coronavirus variant has shown the pandemic is far from over. Despite only being tracked for the past five days, the virus has already been found to have 30 different mutations. The mutations contain features seen in all of the other variants, but also traits that have not been seen before. And the mutations um, show evidence of uh, increased transmissibility, increased infectivity, and also evidence that it could evade the immune response and also the um, uh, treatment uh, with monoclonal antibodies such as Ronaprev. All those are very concerning. It is too early to say vaccines protect people against Omicron. Work is underway to see whether the new variant may be causing new infection in people who have already had coronavirus or whether waning immunity may be playing a role. It, it, it's the mutations that again tell us that it has differences that are there. However, the vaccine's not an all or nothing. And I think it's really important, even more important now that people come out and get their booster doses because having high levels of um, immune response from the booster dose is the one thing that will help overcome this sort of variation. The vaccine um, in in the introduces not only antibodies in our system, but also introduces T cell responses, which are very broad. And so while I think this may reduce the effectiveness of vaccine compared to other variants, I don't think it will mean the vaccine won't work completely. But what it does mean that, you know, boosters become even more important right now. So far, cases of the variant have appeared primarily in young people, leaving them exhausted and with body aches and soreness. Pfizer BioNTech, which has produced a vaccine against COVID-19, is already studying a new variant's ability to evade vaccines. In a related matter, World Health Assembly is organizing conference we started today and will last three days. This World Organization normally meets each May, however, a special session has been organized in order for the representative of the WHO, uh, the 194 member state, to discuss the new international rules for handling future outbreaks. It is worth mentioning that the special session was the second in the history of the WHO. The Philippines launched on Monday an ambitious drive to vaccine 9 million people against COVID-19 in three days, deploying security forces and thousands of volunteers in a program made urgent by the threats of the Omicron variants. More to be clarified in this report. The Philippines launched on Monday an ambitious vaccination campaign to immunize 9 million people against COVID-19 in three days, made urgent by the treats of the Omicron variant. 
though the earlier target of 15 million shot was scaled by the 9 million would still be a significant number. In the archipelago nation, where logistics and vaccine uncertainty are hurdles, it worth recalling that the Philippines has faced one of the worst COVID-19 outbreak in Asia and has been slower than many of its neighbors in immunizing its people. About 35.6 million people have been fully vaccinated, or a third of its 110 million population. The country aims to immunize 54 million people by the end of 2021 and 77 million by next March. The spread of the Omicron variant, which the World Health Organization has described as a variant of concern, has sparked global travel restrictions and rattled financial markets. China sent the biggest inclusion of all plans toward Taiwan in more than seven weeks. Taiwan's air force scrambled again on Sunday to warn 27 Chinese aircraft that entered its air defense zone. Taiwan's defense ministry said that the latest increase in tension across the Taiwan Street straight at China president met its top generals. Taiwan said 27 Chinese aircraft, including 8G-60 fighter jets, entered its air defense buffer zone on Sunday, the latest in a long series of invasions as part of Beijing's pressure on the self-ruled island. The defense ministry said Taiwan scrambled combat aircraft to warn the Chinese planes to leave. It also deployed missile systems to monitor them. In a post on the ministry's Twitter account, Taiwanese Foreign Minister Joseph Wu wrote that the coercive action is obviously meant to bring Taiwan to its knees and keep us away from democratic partners. The Chinese aircraft flew into Taiwan's air defense identification zone near the southern part of the island and out into the Pacific Ocean before returning to China, according to a map by Taiwan authorities. China's Air Force mission toward Taiwan came as Chinese President Xi Jinping met with officers at a military conference where he called for military talent cultivation to support and strengthen the armed forces, according to state-owned news agency Xinhua. China claims democratically ruled Taiwan as its own territory to be brought under its control by force if necessary. It refuses to recognize the island's government and has increasingly sought to isolate the independence-leaning administration of President Tsai Ing-wen. Tens of thousands of Russian troops have reportedly assembled near the Ukrainian border, raising fear that Russia is preparing to repeat its 2014 invasion and annexation of the Ukrainian peninsula of Crimea, which sparked worldwide outrage and sanctions against capital Moscow. Hussein Burkan in the following report. President Vladimir Putin is being watched closely by experts and officials who fear Russia might be planning a military escalation with its neighbor Ukraine. Tens of thousands of Russian troops have reportedly gathered at the border with Ukraine, and experts fear Russia could be about to stage a repeat of its 2014 invasion and annexation of the Ukrainian peninsula of Crimea, which prompted global outrage and sanctions on Moscow. In a press conference with the European Union Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and Lithuania's President Gitana Nosheda in Vilnius, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg stressed that the alliance is concerned about the swarming of Russian forces near the borders with Ukraine, calling on Russia to reduce tension. All allies have expressed solidarity with Lithuania, and we have provided practical uh, help. NATO recently deployed <clears throat> a team of experts to Lithuania to share information, analysis, and experience uh, in countering hybrid threats. We are also in contact with partner countries that may be uh, used for transit, and I welcome their efforts. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov, for his part, stressed that Russia has no intention of attacking Ukraine or any other party, seeing that the hysteria fueled by the Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky is baseless. Russia has repeatedly stressed that it has never planned any military intervention in Ukraine territory, stressing its right to mobilize any military forces anywhere within its territory. It is noteworthy that Russia's President Vladimir Putin announced his intention to strengthen Russia's armed forces to confront the growing activity of NATO in its borders, against the backdrop of tension between Moscow and the West over Ukraine. 
and has repeatedly warned the West not to cross Moscow's red lines and to stay away from what the Kremlin consider its sphere of influence. Critical talks with Iran amid reviving the Iran nuclear deal and preventing its collapse. The talks are to resume in Vienna after five months. Officials will discuss the possible return of the U.S. to the 2015 agreement, which limited Iran nuclear activities in return for the lifting of sanctions about Iran. Marwa Blaver will explain more about this situation. Tehran has announced it will resume talks with world powers later this month in Vienna to try to retrieve their 2015 nuclear deal after the agreement so Iran agreed to restrict its enrichment of uranium in exchange for the lifting of sanctions. In 2018, the United States, under the leadership of Donald Trump, pulled out the deal which had initially been agreed by Washington, the UK, France, Russia, Germany and China. Iran insists that its nuclear program is entirely peaceful. Yet, Western diplomats have warned that the time is running out to negotiate a solution because of the significant advances Iran has made in its uranium enrichment program, which is a possible pathway to a nuclear bomb. Iranian Deputy Foreign Minister Ali Baghri Kani, who serves as Tehran's chief negotiator, announced in a tweet that discussions would resume in Vienna on November 29th. The negotiations in Vienna come amid mounting pressure on Iran, with Western nations warning that the country's nuclear work is advancing to dangerous levels. The United States has previously pulled out the talks under Trump's administration, but his successor, President Joe Biden, took office hoping to return to the 2015 agreement. As William President Nicolas Maduro described on Sunday, European Union observers who came to his country to observe the recent local election as enemies and spies. Maduro denied the irregularities pointed out by the observers in this mission reported. The U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, for his part, said that his country considered the regional elections that were held in Venezuela unacceptable and the country's authorities distorted the process in its favor. After a massive turnout in Honduras election, the opposition has taken the lead. Uh, Tamora Castro will win. She will be Honduras' first female leftist president since 2009. More to be clarified in this report. In Honduras, a strong turnout has raised expectations of change after a dozen of years of national party rule. According to officials, opposition candidate Xiomara Castro has a clear lead over ruling party candidate Nasri Asfura. The Electoral Council said more than 2.7 million people voted and Castro had over 53% support with votes from more than 16% of ballot boxes, while Asfura had 34%. Left-wing Castro has attempted to unite opposition to outgoing President Juan Orlando Hernandez, who has denied accusations of ties to powerful gangs despite an ongoing investigation in the United States, linking him to alleged drug trafficking. Castro stated, We can't just stay at home. This is our chance. This is the time to overthrow the dictatorship, after voting in Castamacas. Salva el pueblo, salva el pueblo. Today, only the people save the people. There is no other opportunity. There will not be another time. Honduras can't endure four more years. We have to stop these caravans of Honduran men and women who are leaving our country in masses because of the insecurity, the lack of opportunity, the lack of work, the lack of health, the lack of education. If the opposition candidate wins, she will be Honduras' first female president, restoring the left to power for the first time since her husband, former President Manuel Zelaya, was forced out of office in a 2009 coup. Russian Interior Minister Gerard Darmian announced Sunday after European meeting in Calais that the European border agency Frontex will deploy as first in December a plan to help combat the smuggling of migrants in the said region, calling for collaboration with the British friends. On Sunday, French Interior Minister Gerard Dormana announced his country's intention to work with its British friends to better tackle the migrant crisis, but on an equal footing. 
This came in a statement after a European meeting in a French city of Calais against the backdrop of the death of 27 migrants in the English Channel on Wednesday. Dermana added that the European border agency Frontex will deploy, as of early December, a plane to help combat the smuggling of migrants in the said region. The French minister explained that this plane will fly day and night over the region between France and the Netherlands. Darmanin also expressed his hope for cooperation between the European Union and the United Kingdom, saying that they want to work with their British friends to tackle this issue. This meeting was not anti-British, it was pro-European, and we have to work as our British friends and tell them a few things. First of all, to help us collectively better fight against smugglers. As we have said, information is lacking. Answers sometimes are not always meeting the demands of the French police. For example, spoke at length with my British counterpart. I believe she agreed it is to fight against the attractiveness of England. For its part, the British government called on France again to cooperate in combating migrant smuggling networks in the English Channel. In an effort to contain the anger of Paris, which excluded London from European meeting on this issue. An official said that France Minister for Overseas Territories will hold crisis talks on Caribbean islands beginning Sunday as the government seeks to defuse tensions following more than a week of unrest in the region as a result of its handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. In Guadeloupe, there is a long history of mistrust in the government's handling of health crisis dating back to 1970 when many people were exposed to toxic pesticides using banana plantation. Curfew have helped restore some calm in recent days following violence in which stores were looted and police were shot at people. More inter latest and uh, international news in this wrap up with our friend Maria. Today, the trial of 47 Hong Kong Democrat activists charged under a Beijing imposed national security law resumed. The activists were charged with conspiracy to commit usurpation for their participation in official elections held by the pro-democracy camp last year to determine candidates for legislative elections. Authorities claim that the primaries were part of a plot to bring Hong Kong's government to a halt, and they have cracked down hard on dissent after months of anti-government protest in 2019. Most outspoken democracy advocates have been imprisoned, intimidated into silence or sought asylum abroad, while demonstrations have been prohibited in the city's most prominent pro-democracy newspaper, the Apple Daily has been shut down. On Sunday, the UN Agency for Palestinians opened a school for Palestinian refugees in Jordan. The Zuhur Elementary and Preparatory Girls School in Amman was built with the U.S. State Department funding. According to Nancy Jackson of the State Department's Bureau of Population, Refugees and Migration, the United States has made significant contributions to UNRWA's operations this year. This year, the United States has made significant contributions to UNRWA's operations, funding that provides support for more than 700 schools that UNRWA operates across the region. The UN Relief and Works Agency has been dealing with budget constraints exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. Philippe Lazzarini, the head of the UN agency, said that we will be able to respond to the challenges together and in solidarity because we owe education, we owe to offer dreams and a better future to the Palestinian refugees. Swiss health officials issued a warning earlier this week about a fifth wave of infections citing the rise of COVID-19 case numbers. Today, Swiss voters overwhelmingly supported the legislation establishing a system with special COVID-19 certificates that allows only people who have been vaccinated, recovered or tested negative to attend public events and gatherings. The legislation, which is already in effect, was supported by 62% of voters in the final results. The vote came as Switzerland, like many other European countries, is experiencing an increase in coronavirus cases. 
On Sunday, turnout was about 65 percent, an unusually high figure in a country where referendums are held several times a year. The former president of Georgia, Mikhail Saakashvili, appeared in court in the capital, Tbilisi, on Monday. The president was charged of abuse of office and is also facing charges related to the raiding of the TV Imedi TV company and the seizure of its property. And a large crowd of supporters gathered on the streets as the court hearing took place. Miss Marvel is an upcoming American television miniseries created by Bisha K. Ali for the streaming service Disney Plus, based on the Marvel Comics character Kamala Khan. What is interesting is that it portrays a young teenager Muslim of Pakistani descent. The details in what follow. We need new Ms. Marvel, a new miniseries featuring the very fast Muslim character from the eponymous comics. This is the 18th television series in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The six-episode first season is slated to air on Disney Plus sometime in summer 2022. A Muslim young teenager of color from Pakistan? That's a combination you don't see quite often in American cinema. Miss Marvel is a new kind of superhero. But at the core of all of it, her story is so universal. Miss Marvel is one of the newer characters in the Marvel comics. Santa Amanta, the comic book editor, spoke about the character of Miss Marvel on the late night with Seth Meyers' show when it was just a comic book. When this character in particular, people came came up to me, came up to Willow, and they said, finally, we have a character out there, not just a superhero, but a character out there that we can connect with, and that my young daughter, my young son can aspire to become one day. You don't have to look a particular way to be powerful and to be a hero, and that's why it was so important. Now that it's turned into a miniseries, Santa Amanta, the executive producer, spoke about the casting process, which was so vast, and how they landed on Iman. Santa Amanta drew on her own experience in New Jersey as an American Muslim of Pakistani descent. Uh, the writer, G. Willow Wilson and myself, sort of went back and forth about who we wanted Kamala Khan to be, and it was very much about breaking stereotypes and about the idea of changing people's perceptions of Muslim Americans. But beyond that, we had a very universal approach about the concept of kind of re redefining yourself. You promised you'd be cool. I am cool. The casting process was vast. When we discovered Iman, we knew that she was Kamala Khan. It was unanimous decision. Yeah, I can't comprehend this right now. And the character of Kamala Khan, a teenage Pakistani-American girl living in New Jersey, is the first role of 16-year-old Canadian actress Iman Valani. Kamala Khan, a.k.a. Ms. Marvel, first appeared in August 2013 edition of Captain Marvel and later morphed into a full-fledged comic book series the following year. The teenager has the gift of polymorphism and elasticity, powers unleashed by the passage of a teratogenic cloud over her city. As child, she idolizes Captain Marvel, whom she saw with her own eyes, and is inspired by her own name of superheroine Ms. Marvel. And in Apple Sport now, last night within the world of football, we witnessed a lot of goals and drama endings in all the European top leagues, starting from Spain, from Spain where Real Madrid take the lead at last minute by Vinicius Junior, is performing tremendous season so far. More about yesterday's games in this report. El Merengue or Real Madrid came from behind to beat Sevilla at the Bernabeu. Moving four points clear at the top of La Liga, Vinicius Jr. scored a spectacular late winner. Rafa Mir put the visitors ahead early, but Karim Benzema equalized with a tap-in. Real's comeback was completed when Vinicius cut inside and hit the top corner with a spectacular right-footed strike. Real are now four points clear of rival Atletico Madrid, who thumped Cadiz 4-1 earlier on Sunday. With Thomas Limar, Antoine Griezmann, Angel Correa and Matheus Kona on target for Diego Simeone's side and also Real Sociedad. United who were playing under caretaker manager Michael Carrick until Rangig's appointment was announced, kept Cristiano Ronaldo on the bench and played mostly defensive game until Jadon Sancho broke the deadlock five minutes after halftime. Chelsea were forced into action and Jorginho made amends for his error in the 69th minute when he equalized from the penalty spot after Aaron Wombisaka fooled Thiago Silva. 
Sassolo came from behind to win at the San Siro, denying AC Milan the chance to take top of Serie A. Milan took the lead through captain Alessio Romagnoli in the 21st minute, but Sassolo scored three minutes later when Gianolka hammered in 25 yards via the crossbar. In the second half, Domenico Berardi added the visitors' third goal after Simon Cayer turned into his own net. With sport, we come to the end. That's all what we have for today's edition. Thank you so much for being with us. Take care of yourself. Good night.